Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we're going to do a charting recap on the videos that I've made. I'm going to add the NASDAQ in there. We're going to talk about that first, but we're going to also talk about Apple, Google, Disney, Netflix, PTI, and HPK. And I'm going to kind of share some of the stuff that I'd stated in my video or or some stuff that I think could transpire going into the next couple of weeks, maybe a couple months, maybe even a year. I don't know. Um, I do apologize for the break. You know, I was getting a little bit burned out after making a video every single day, and I've been pretty busy, uh, to, to say the least. And uh, another part is the 45 subscribers. You know, I felt I put a lot, of, a lot of hard work and shared a lot of good information, and I didn't, uh, I didn't think 45 subscribers was justified, so I had to put my time to use elsewhere. But I am back. I'm gonna try and uh, get back to that consistent schedule. Uh, but nonetheless, I do apologize for the break. Um, that is why I'm going to spoil you guys with a longer video right here, just a recap of all the charting videos that I've made. Um, but before we get into any charting, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. I do not have individual holdings in the stocks. I may own some in my index funds. And I do play around with the NASDAQ a little bit, but nonetheless, I have nothing to gain, nothing to lose, simply stating my opinion with this video. I, I will say that I am going to post in the description the time slot that I talk about each individual chart. So if you're looking to skip around, uh, those time slots will be in the description for you guys to look at. So starting with the NASDAQ. Now I know I already have a lot of stuff built in right here. This is uh, actually my third attempt at the video. A lot of information to go over here, guys. But I think this is going to be uh, the video that I post. So I'm going to try and uh, just give a brief overall view of some of the stuff right here. This I look at as a five wave structure. One, two, three, four. Now, are we going to get that true wave five that cracks this support that comes down to this trend line? I don't know. We're going to go over a bull case scenario and a bear case scenario for you guys. Now, um, I, I'm going to talk about this, and then we're going to talk about this day, and we're going to talk about this day in particular. Let's start with the January 26th. That is this day. They posted, they announced the, the Federal Reserve announced the rate hike of only three quarter point on this day. And we get a gap up. Now, what transpired leading up into that day? You had a run, you have a one, two, three, four. Now, on my fourth wave, we're pretty much back testing the tops of this wave one right here, right? And it just so happens that this was the day they announced the rate hike of only three quarter point. You get the gap up and you stay on this uptrend right here. But when this uptrend cracks, right, this is what's transpired since then. You have a one, two, three, four. Now it just so happens that on the top of my wave four, you're back testing the bottom of wave one. And CPI numbers came out the next day. You get the gap down and the continuation. Now, a lot of people felt like they were blindsided by this 4.5-5% move in the NASDAQ. But we're going to talk about that real quick. And I'm simply just going to draw my trend line. One, two, three points of contact right here, guys. Wow, would you look at that? One, two, three points of contact. On my wave, you have a one, two, three. On my wave three, we try to hold this support. Ultimately, it cracks. On my wave four, that back tests the bottom of wave one. It just so happens that we're also back testing the bottom of this uptrend. Oh my gosh. Now, let's say you had no idea about any of the news, the CPI, what, whatever that uh, means. Let's say you had no idea about any of that stuff. You could have simply just done simple technical analysis is that we're setting a close at the bottom of my uptrend that had already cracked. When support cracks, you expect it to act as resistance on the way up. We set a close right on it, guys. Right on it. If you were expecting a gap up over top of this, you know you could have got that. But nonetheless, then you add in the five wave structure that's taking place right now. You had a one, two, three, four back test in the bottom of wave one and this and this uptrend. I mean, if you were expecting bullish right here, you know, I tip my hat to you for being being aggressive, but nonetheless, that is asking for a lot right there. And nonetheless, it gets responded with a five percent move down in the Nasdaq. Now we are at this tail end of this five wave structure. Now, what could I see transpire? Now, it just so happens. 
here is the day. Let's look at this. Uh, J July 26, right? The day they announced the three-quarter hike. Boom, you get the gap up. That gap got filled on the money right here. Look at that entry. How much money do you think was put in off that gap fill for this wave four? How much money do you think exited the market at the end of my wave four? Guys, you see what I'm trying to say? Gap fill buyers are going to look to swing trade. They're looking to take profits. If you thought that this move up in the market was anything meaningful, you know, you got a lot to you got you got a lot to learn, but that's what I'm here for. This is why I'm pointing this out on the Nasdaq. Now, is this the tail end of a five wave structure? You know, personally, I was expecting this gap up, which is my second red line, to get filled on Friday, but you can see that it doesn't get filled. I think I don't think this wave five is over. I think that this gap is going to get filled, and then we're going to see a shorter term A B C. Now, this could transpire in the course of a couple days it could transpire in the course of a single day or maybe a couple weeks but ultimately I'm looking for this ABC structure to end up meeting in with this downtrend and then I'm looking for a wave five a five way pattern so you get the one two three now this represents my double top coming in off the downtrend and from that double top I'm expecting a one two three four five wave structure meeting down to this gap fill or potentially this is my ixic on a week chart you have this double bottom play that's coming in off the 200 weekly now if this gets good volume off this 200 you know i wouldn't be surprised if short term this was going to be a big driver for a bull case scenario in the market but if this 200 cracks and this gap fill down here does not get very good volume, I'm expecting a wave 5 to truly come in where we're going to see uh, the NASDAQ test that 10,000 flat, maybe even this long-term trend line. And that will be the full completion of my five-wave structure on the NASDAQ. So a little bit of a bull case scenario with this support that it's trying to, to build right here with the gap fill as well. But ultimately, a wave 5 is in play here um, so two ways to, to look at the Nasdaq there I'm gonna move on because I feel I got my point across on the Nasdaq we're gonna move over to Apple now the big the big story for Apple is that let's just let's just recap for the people that I haven't seen you got a left leg neckline double bottom extended right leg anytime I get an extended right leg I'm expecting the price to come back test the neckline well what do we get over here we back test the neckline and we even attempt to back test this further neckline down here and then uh, Apple gets bullish now it just so happens you know I'll mark it out quick right here if this is my neckline this is my one to one this is my two to one this is my three to one where does this three to one meet up at let's go look oh look look at this gap fill down right here called it identified it on the money and what's transpired since then you got a one two three four five wave structure I'll be damned guys is it it's just like the Nasdaq it's just like the Nasdaq a nice five wave structure now we all know Apple is in all of the major indexes. It's in the NASDAQ, it's in the S&P, it's in the Dow. Big driver of it. I called it out in the video that if Apple is very bearish, the market is going to be very bearish with it. There's no way around it. Now, same same scenario. You got this wick bottom that said on Friday. I, I don't think that this is over. And in Apple's scenario, it doesn't have the gap fill like it like the Nasdaq does. But I think the Nasdaq's gonna drop a little bit, and then if the Nasdaq gets a little bit bullish, you know, I'd expect Apple to kind of trade up with it. This is simply stating that you know if Apple falls a little bit more, I'm looking for an ABC structure to meet in with this downtrend, and then from that downtrend, I'm looking for a one, two, three, four, five wave structure, same scenario, and we got the same gap fill right here on Apple, but. The long story for Apple is that I don't like it right here. I like the valuation for Apple around that one, that 90 to 120 range. I want to see it down there, come down, fill some of these gaps, and if I'm lucky enough to get a $96 gap on Apple, meeting with my long-term uptrend, you can see long-term uptrend, meeting in off that $96 gap is going to be a big ask, but... Um, you know, there's there's 20, 30,000 stocks out there, guys. If if you're wrong about one and you miss out on one, you, you know it's not the end of the world. There's so much potential out there. But 
yeah, I, I like Apple at this $96 gap, and if I don't get it, you know, who cares? On to the next one, right? Uh, so moving right along, we're going to go over to Google. Now, Google is getting interesting to me. Google is getting very interesting for me. Now, same story here, guys. You got a one, two, three, four, fourth wave back test in the bottom of wave one. Called it out many times, and I'm looking for a wave five. Now, what's transpired in Google since then? We've gotten a one, two, three, four, five wave structure. Now, I'd stated that that Google has some solid support at that 105 area, but also at that 100 area right here, 100 flat. I like the valuation of Google there, but ultimately we have this gap up at 96 and 95 that would be a completion of a five of a true five wave structure to me. Um, is it justified to start in a position in Google right here? You know, it probably is. You could probably buy a tracker share and be all right, but. Nonetheless, if I if I get gap fills in this, this is a clear buying window for me, and probably maybe 100 flat would be justified for a tracker, and then anything under 95, you know, you're getting fair value for Google. That's my opinion, of course, but I think that it's fairly priced at that point. You you are got the AOK -okay to truly start filling your position out. If if Google were to come down uh, to these to this gap fill at 82, you know, I think that's a good spot to cost average in, you know, there's probably a gap in at that 90 flat as well. I think there's a lot of potential in Google and you're getting the tail end of a five wave structure right here. But shorter term, you know, you do have this one, two, three, four, five wave structure meeting in at support. Uh, could it turn bullish? Yeah, it could, but um, I like it. I, I'm being greedy and I wanna see this 96 to 95 dollar gap get filled. Moving right along, Disney. I think I made this video shortly after the earnings. I'd simply stated, you know, if you think that this gap's not getting filled from the earnings today, you're out of your mind. And sure enough, what's transpired, you got a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 wave structure. This is an ABC. Now you're getting a 1, 2, 3, 4. You know, I'd expect this to drop down and truly fill these two gaps, get a nice pop where you get your 4, and then your wave 5 is going to bring you down to that 100 flat probably. What transpires from there, probably an ABC test this downtrend and if it gets rejected you know we're coming back down here to the low 90s again maybe even fill this $85 gap and maybe even back test the bottom of that 90 support and come down to this long-term trend line at 70 flat you know it's possible uh, but uh, I, I would say that Disney is is not an area where I'd be comfortable buying it in my opinion uh, I'd want to see it close to this 100 flat I'd want to see some exhaustive moves down into here. If I was starting a new position, you know, you can probably buy a tracker share right here. Cost average, cost average. Uh, okay, start truly filling the position. And if you get that exhaustive move down, okay, let's make this and fill this position out to around that 3% off this long-term trend line. That's what I see with, uh, with Disney. Bear case, our bull case scenario is that, you know, you, you get this. One two three four five A B C one two three four five meeting in down here at this hundred flat and let's actually break this downtrend and go fill some of these gaps up here. That would be a bull case scenario, but ultimately I would expect the price to eventually get down to this hundred flat before it gets bullish. Uh, moving right along, let's go over the Disney. You know, I had someone tell me that you know Disney or not Disney Netflix. I had someone tell me, you know, Netflix is holding up, man. I think you're wrong about your analysis on Netflix. And I, I try not to let a couple trading days uh, uh, determine whether I'm right or wrong about a stock. And honestly, I'd like to see a couple of years. But in the video, I actually went back and rewatched it. In the video, I state that, you know, from the top of the move all the way to the bottom, I look at it as a simple wave one. Now, wave two would be my retrace. Now, this is a 75% move to the downside. A retrace up to a 702 is like a 200% move to the upside. So I simply just took my retrace from this big gap down right here. Now it just so happens that my 702 pretty much and my 786 meets up at this gap fill. A bull case scenario is that this is not done retracing and this is going to extend up here to these 300 to 350 range. If I see a double top come in off of this gap fill, you know, watch out. I'm telling you guys right now that this is not a bottom for, for Netflix, in my opinion. If this is the retrace phase right here, I'm looking for a wave three to come down, crack this support, a wave four to back test that support, and a wave five 
to come down you know possibly even break a hundred flat you know you got a gap fill right here at 98 you got a gap fill down here at 90 86 and you got some big gaps down here at 70 and and 50 bucks and that's kind of where my long-term trend lines meeting in at I would be careful with with Netflix guys if you're a short-term trader you know we are probably in a retrace phase you could get a price up to those 300s again but long term I'm telling you watch out with this one that's what I'll say about Netflix BTI BTI is getting pretty interesting um, I don't know which way this is gonna go but the moral of the story guys if you guys haven't watched my videos is that you have this double top come in in the middle of my 702 and 786 now anytime I see that I'm focused on this diagram right here anytime I see that I'm looking at it as a second wave so here's my first wave your second wave you get a wave three that cracks this support you get a wave four that back tests the bottom of that support and you get an exhaustive wave five that comes down and fills these gaps over here but from that 702 over here this is what's transpired so now I'm focused on this diagram you got another so here's my 702 there is my wave one wave one you had a clear rejection never set the close of my 702 but a wick into my 786 you get a clear rejection right there there's my wave two my wave four back test the bottom of wave one where it sets another double top and then you get a wave five that comes down and fills this gap that I didn't fill before I know I'm talking fast but follow me or go back and watch my video where I break it down uh, but nonetheless it is a five wave structure you get a one two three four five wave structure and this is the extension that's gotten now we got this clear downtrend right here but at the end of any five wave structure I'm looking for a double bottom higher low I state in the video that up here it looks bearish let's see it come down and test these gaps here's my first gap fill boom gaps up right there wick 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 three wicks into it you get a nice four percent pop meets in with my downtrend though you see this now we come down where do we trade to next here's my next gap fill we gap up right here wick 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 three wicks in a row there's your buying pressure off that second gap now I stated that if it does get decent buying pressure I may think about getting a tracker share into it I have not bought that tracker share but nonetheless I gotta see more information this is good volume off this now now that this gap is clearly filled if I think the Nasdaq is gonna be short-term bearish let's see how let's see how it acts and let's see it hold this support down here it, it's got to hold this support before if it, if it starts breaking up to the, to the upside okay I can start a tracker share and let's see how it acts with this downtrend if it gets rejected off this downtrend I want to see a support crack and I want to see my first theory my, my first uh, case scenario that I have already had marked out for a long time come into fruition I want to see I like the valuation down here in these mid 30s but there is a catalyst with this one the catalyst for this one is BTI pays a seven and a half percent dividend and it pays it at the end of this month if somebody's getting in for this dividend they're probably getting in off this gap fill in these last three days and I'd be interested to see what the price action for BTI holds over the course of this week in particular because it pays that hefty dividend at the end of the month I, I don't see why why anyone else would want to enter in off this gap besides okay they pay this big dividend at the end of the month and you know it actually is has got a decent valuation right here it's not a bad place so uh yeah very interested in bti and i have been watching it uh, out of the stocks up here i've really only been watching two and that's bti and google and of course the nasdaq but uh disney i it's it's kind of in a range in apple i just don't like the valuation of apple but moving right along uh looking at hpk i mean nothing's changed with hpk same scenario we got this at, at the start of the IPO you got this fall you set a double bottom and extended right leg that is a full extension I mean you guys can see the clear full extension here's my neckline down here you get a huge fall back test the neckline and we turn bullish now as we've turned bullish we got a wave we got a left leg neckline double bottom extended right leg with any extended right leg I'm looking for a back test of the neckline could it transpire well you have this huge fall right here here's my wave one here's my wave two that we're setting a double top lower high this is bearish as it gets right there do I think this is gonna extend for a 702 I doubt it but 
If I'm wrong, okay. But nonetheless, I'm looking at this as a wave one, wave two, wave three cracks this support and in my wave four we back test that support and a wave five brings me down to my neckline we can mark it right here there you guys see it right there i mean we have a theory on how it's going to get there do you want to buy it up here or would you rather buy it down here i'll let you guys decide on that but yeah that is going to complete the video i'll make sure i put uh, a time stamp for each individual one that i talk about but yeah that's that's how i see it um just a quick recap before we end you know here's the nasdaq futures i do not think that this wick bottom is going to hold i think we're going to see a price come down and truly fill this gap right here um you can see the wick from friday come down and get into the middle of this sort of short-term buying window right here but ultimately i'd want to see this gap you know it is placed a little bit high but I'd want to see this gap up get filled. And then I'm looking for some sort of ABC structure swing trade come into to play. And then a five wave structure coming down to my longer term gap fill. That's what I'm looking for. And uh, yeah, that's my update on the charts. And I hope you guys like this video. And we'll see you on the next one.